Yes, it's time for another bike build. This time we're gonna build a complete road bike. It's a Chinese carbon frame that is very light, so it's gonna be a real pleasure to build this. But the color, it's a bit boring, black. So let's get this painted and built. I'm gonna do it in two parts. One part where we dedicate to the paint job and then a second part where we assemble the whole bike. So let's get started. Before we start to put the paint on this frame, we're gonna do the boring part. Let's start out with the sanding. I don't know how many hours it's gonna take, probably more than 10, 20, maybe even 30. I don't know. I'm just gonna sit down and try to enjoy the time. To do this, I got different types of sandpaper, different grits. So I'm gonna start out with probably like 240. I will go for 600 and then 800. I will also use a bucket of hot water because I wanna reduce all the dust. So therefore I have wet sandpaper and also a pair of good gloves because this stuff is gonna tear down my hands in no time. That's pretty much all I need to get going. Before I started, I removed anything that is attached to the frame, the derailleur hanger, any nuts and screws. I've secured all the internal cable routing so that it's accessible. Everything's gone so that we can just rub on. So I take the sandpaper, some water, and I start off. What's taking most time is exactly as you have guessed. It's not the open areas. It is these delicate corners and in around different parts like this. So far I've done pretty much all this. It's not as bad as I had dreading for, so it actually progresses pretty good. Okay, so the paint is coming off really nicely. Once you get through the, the clear coat and the base coat, you can see that you go down into a sort of white edge like this, and it looks like you're through, but you're not really because you still have the primer to go through. And when it's wet, it's really hard to see this. However, you don't want to go too deep either because you don't want to go into the carbon and tear it down. Once I'm through the white parts here, I stop with the most heavy grit paper and I try to go with a little softer one further on. <laughs> the frame is finally stripped from the paint. It's clean. It, there's no paint left on it. It took 20 hours. 20 hours. That's crazy. But it's nice. It's really nice. And also the fork. So after I was finished with the sanding, I have also masked it up uh, so that no parts that I don't want any paint on is, is left. As you can see, the bottom bracket is completely covered and all those little holes and little rivets and everything. I've also masked up the, the bearing t seats here so that we don't get any paint in there. So this one's good for the paint booth. But before I paint it, I will uh, clean it off. I will use uh, white spirit to clean it off so that I don't get any fingerprints or any grease or anything like that that will ruin the paint job. Now, what I'm aiming for here is this. It's gonna be a British racing green. Why can't I say that word? British racing green. I will use gold details, matte clear coat on the green parts, gloss clear coat on the gold parts. What I will start off with is a two component epoxy primer. Continue with the, with the green, smaragd green acrylic paint. Continue on with this metallic gold for the gold parts, of course. Then this gloss clear coat that will give a really strong and nice coat. It's also two component. Then I will finish off on the green parts after I mask the golden parts with this matte clear coat. So we're gonna do a couple of layers here and um, yeah, let's hit the paint booth. Okay, let's uh, clean it off with this washing gasoline or white spirit. All right, it's time to put the paint on the paint. It's time to put the paint on the frame. And of course, this one is extremely important. This is some pretty heavy stuff we're gonna put out here. So make sure you have a proper respirator before you start. Now, this is the two component system. I'm gonna put the red cap into the bottom so that we get to mix it and then we get spraying. So let's get going. Oh, you thought we were done with the sanding. No, 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 no. Still got some sanding left to do. Not as much as before though. We're just gonna take this thousand grit sandpaper and we're gonna scuff off the surface a little bit before we add a second layer of primer. Let's just dip this into the warm water and get going. Mm. 
We don't have to go very deep. We don't have to go very, you know, hard. We just want to smoothen out the surface a bit, remove any kind of spots. If you got some runs, you can remove them as well. It's also a perfect opportunity to sort of observe if you missed out and when you're kind of learning where, where did you miss out on the frame. As you can see here, this is in the front um, where the stand held up the frame. And this is a place where I have had a little bit of an issue to uh, access to get paint. Okay, so I have uh, wiped up and cleaned up the frame after the sanding, just to remove any kind of, you know, dust and stuff like that and greasy fingerprints so that it's nice and clean before we hit it. With another shot, primer. All right, the uh, primer is on. Turned out pretty good if you ask me. I'm gonna let it cure for about 24 hours and then I will hit the sandbox again. As you can see, I flipped it over just to get uh, good reach in all the angles and all the sides of the frame. And also because it's hard to spray with the can in certain angles, the spray just won't reach the nozzle. So that is why I also get a better spray. You get a better pattern, spray pattern if you, uh, if you turn it upside down. So yeah, this is pretty good, I think. Let's just send it down and then we can hit it with the green base paint so that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome okay guys the uh, the frame has once again been sanded down I have washed it wiped off all the well you know all the stuff that can get there when you sand it so what we're gonna do now is to hit it with the first shot of paint this marag green let's go Right, the green paint is on and if you ask me it turned out really good so I'm really satisfied with that we're gonna bling things up with the with the gold paint but before we do so we're gonna mask off the frame and I'm gonna print some stencils for the logos graphics and all that stuff with this beautiful silhouette cameo behind me here uh, and if you don't have a machine like this you don't have to you can buy logos but if you do have a machine like this it makes things a little bit easier and you get a lot more possibilities to do exactly the way you want it so go check it out I will link it in the description below if you if you want one. So let's get going. Now I have printed out, cut out, and weeded out these uh, stencils. I put some transfer film on there. Don't know if you can see it, so that I can transfer all the parts without them moving around and, and stuff like that. So I will now apply these to the frame. I will then mask up everything that I don't want any paint on because these spray cans tend to find its way around and into the frame and get to places where you don't want it. So make sure that you cover everything up that you don't want. So that's what we're gonna do now. Really smooth, just rolling it off, making sure that nothing gets sticked on the backing paper and comes with the transfer tape. Now this is the tricky part because you really need to see where you want the logo before you really press it on there because once it's on, it's on. Trying to push here so that we don't get any, any gaps or anything like that around here because this is where we will apply the paint and this is where we don't want it to leak in underneath the masking. I'm gonna take the transfer tape, lift it off like this. All right, something like that. We don't have to care too much about any air bubbles or anything like that because it's really only around these parts that this is important. So make sure that you don't have any air bubbles around the logo and you should be fine. Now let's continue all over the frame. Ok 
Okay guys, I have masked up the frame as good as I can. Isn't it beautiful? No, no it's not. It's not very beautiful. It's not beautiful. But that's not the point either. This is beauty in the making. So I have simply covered everything that I don't want any paint on just to make sure that I don't get any overspray. Anything that is not supposed to be gold isn't supposed to be gold. When you become a little bit more experienced, well, you probably don't have to mask it this much and a pro would probably laugh at this. I'm a beginner, so that's why I'm taking the safe side here. So I'm making sure that everything is covered. So let's hit the paint booth. I will now give it a very light coat of paint to begin with, just to make sure that it doesn't leak in underneath the stencils. And then I give it a little heavier coat and then we're done. All right, the frame is uh, masked up and ready to go. We're gonna hit it with this beautiful metallic metallic gold so yeah let's get going as you can see this first coast is really really thin it's just a little little touch on there so i have now let it cure for about 10-15 minutes and I will now hit it with a second little bit thicker coat and then we're done. No! The moment of truth is here. Let's reveal, let's check out what the bike looks like underneath all these wraps of paper and tape and everything. So let's go. Scary to see. Will the logos look right? And have I avoided the overspray? That is the question. Have I gotten any paint where I don't want it? I truly hope not. And I don't really think so, but let's see. Okay, the masking is gone and I must say it looks absolutely amazing. I'm really satisfied with this one. I do have some residue left on the frame from the, from the tape and from the masking. I'm gonna try to remove that as smoothly as possible without affecting any of the paint. Wish me luck there. Okay guys, I've had a bit of a setback. As I was cleaning up the frame after painting the logos and graphics, I realized that there was quite a lot of residue left and I accidentally harmed the, the paint job in a few spots on the green. So I decided to give it another shot of green coat just to make sure that those places are not an issue anymore. And in order to do so I had to mask up all the gold areas because I don't want to do them again. I don't want to put that many coats on. So I've masked up all the gold in order to cover that when I hit it with another shot of green. This is not ideal, this is not perfect, but I hopefully can save up the project, which probably would not be very nice if I don't go through with this. So let's continue on and give it another shot of green. Okay guys, I put another green coat on and we're gonna peel off the, uh, the masking that I've done. So wish me luck that it looks good. I do have some good feelings about this. So let's just hope that we've saved this one. Okay, the project seems to be saved. It looks, it looks really good, I must say that. No more residue, no more problems. All the parts that were lost is now recovered. So it looks great and next up is the clear coat. Damn. The paint and the logos and everything is where we want it to be. So it's time to hit it with some nice gloss clear coat. So I'm just gonna mix this one and let's get going. I 
time for a second shot of clear coat. The paint is curing in the cage and the fork is hanging over here looking really nice. We're now going to let it cure for about 24 hours and then I'm going to set it down with a thousand grit sandpaper before we hit it with another shot of clear coat. The frame has cured for about 24 hours and it looks amazing. So it's time to return to the good old friend, the sandpaper. <laughs> yep, you heard it. We're gonna do some more sanding. This time it's the thousand grit. So we're just gonna smoothen out the surface. We're gonna rough it off enough so that we can put on another layer of clear coat. And we especially wanna do it over the logo so that we smoothen out any, any uneven surfaces around it. So just dip it into the water and get going. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible to see, but the surface becomes a little bit white, a little bit torn, a little bit affected, but it's not through the clear coat. So it has just smoothened out this surface. The frame has been sanded down, also the fork. And I must say, it really, really, it is hard to take that sandpaper out and start to scuff off because it looks beautiful already from the beginning. It doesn't feel right to do it, but rest assured, you will get a better result. You will get a better durability on your frame. Don't be afraid of doing it. Make sure that you have a very fine grit sandpaper so that you don't go too deep and you should be just fine. And this will make it very nice. What we're gonna do now is get back into the paint booth and continue on spraying it with the second shot of gloss clear coat. So let's get going. There has been a slight change of plans. I have decided in the name of art not to go through with the matte clear coat. I simply found that the gloss clear coat was too beautiful to cover. So I'm not gonna go through with the final layer. And that means that the paint fork is done and we're now gonna go through with the build. So I have unmasked all the parts that were covered and I've also reattached all the nuts and the bolts and the brackets. Also picked out the cable routing and everything. So the frame is pretty much ready to be built now into a, a bike. So if you wanna check out my paint booth, there will be a link somewhere here or here or whatever. Also check out the wheels that I would put on I've done an unboxing video there and stay tuned because soon there will be another video where I build this beautiful frame into an even more beautiful bike so check that out. I will finish this up with some nice footage of the frame so you get to see it in detail. I'll see you in my next DIY bike project. Cheers.